Kazakawa Kazoo, bringing to you the Gearing Part 2 video featuring Amano Kenji. If you are a brand new Dragon S player, you should definitely check out the Part 1 video if you haven't. I want to emphasize that Amano Kenji is a brand new character that I've created from scratch. All the gear he has now is self-earned. I need to be clear about this because the community has been very generous and some of you who have watched my live streams will know that I have received a lot of care packages from some really generous people. This is just to be clear that Amano Kenji did not benefit from those care packages when it comes to progression. I take a lot of pride in ensuring that Amano's Kenji progression is as F2P as he can get. I've uploaded a Guardian Nest Labyrinth 8 solo deathless video that you can check out after watching this one. I took out the triple slash BMJ in that run as well, so do definitely check it out. Alright, let me first show you my gladiator stats in town. In this video, I'll share key items that you need to get since they are essential to progression, especially so for free to play players. Let's start off with the unique Libra Heraldry that gives the final damage stat. Assuming you have already enhanced your skiller weapons and armors to plus 9, you should now have some Labyrinth points to spare for the Libra Heraldry that gives final damage. This heraldry can be upgraded by using update packages that are bought with labyrinth points. You need 800 labyrinth points to buy the heraldry itself from the NPC in front of the boundary gate in St. Haven. Then, later, you need a total of 57,550 labyrinth points to upgrade this from version 1.00 to 3.05. You need to buy the right upgrade package version, so definitely take extra care when you're buying the update packages. This heraldry gives me an additional 18% FD boost at version 3.05 of my Gladiator, bring my final damage stat to a total of 68% additional damage. This brings us to a bunch of items you want to get at the Blood Sweat Tears shop, or BST for short. You can actually uh, uh, find this shop via the Adventurers Guild member David NPC. You will have around 330 Adventurers Necessity Boxes if you have completed your main quest up to chapter 17. This will give you over 800,000 points of Blood Sweat Tears which you can use to purchase a full set of mystery costumes from the BST shop. This costume set is permanent, so unless you're going to be spending some money buying a rare costume set from the cash shop, or using gold to purchase some epic great costume from the trading house, this costume set will be great for free-to-play players. The next key item in the BST shop is the Great Problem Solver, or the Royal Problem Solver title. Both are great titles to have at this stage of the game, so definitely check them out as well. You can also grab the Origin of Pandora that is relevant to your class damage type, but take note that the Origin has a duration of 30 days. There are many useful items here as well like the Skill Up Heraldry Pouch, the Potential Heraldry Tree Slots, Talisman Slot Expansion and many more, so definitely check out the BST shop to see what you need. Next up, you need to get the Mirage Dragon Jade. This Dragon Jade can be upgraded to plus 10 and then evolve to the Paracelin version with a Moonstone. And then when you get the Paracelin Dragon Jade to plus 10, you can then further evolve it with the Aurora Stone to the Aurora Dragon Jade. This is basically guaranteed increase in damage because the enhancement cannot fail and it only takes time to earn the resources needed to upgrade this Dragon Jade. Simply complete your main quest up to chapter 17 again and it should lead you to a side quest with Merchant Jamihua. For more details, I have links to Cody's Mirage Dragon Jade guide in the description below, so definitely check it out. With this, it brings us to running the Catastrophe Red Lotus Palace via the Pathfinder Zephros NPC. You will need Red Lotus Crown to enhance your Mirage Dragon Jade, so you want to use up the 7 run limit every day. If you are lucky, you will even get a Gold Goblin Coin which will definitely help you earn much needed gold for future use. Don't forget to use the Abundance Talisman and if possible, get the Noblest Buff for increased drop rate before using the Gold Goblin Coin. Again, Speed Coley have a great video on the Gold Goblin coin preparation, I'll link that in the description below as well. Since I've mentioned talisman earlier, you want to grab some rare great talisman from the trading house. You can even find some cheap ones that have the relevant third stats to your class, so make sure to scroll properly and find yourself some good deals. You can also acquire talisman from running the deep abyss of nightmare. If you're looking for epic great talisman, you will need to run it at labyrinth 10 difficulty or higher for a decent chance to get it as a drop for a reward. So if you want to reach the gear status of my gladiator in the fastest possible time, you will need to know where you can acquire additional enhancement resources such as tavern points. Aside from the ladder shop and sometimes via events, you can also acquire 11 points by running the Cerberus Nest. When a character reaches level 95, you will have a Cerberus pouch as a reward. This pouch consists of the entry ticket as well as the key to open a bonus chest at the end of the nest. The nest is very easy to run since your stats are equalized meaning your gear don't play a part. The base reward for Cerberus Nest is 10,000 Labyrinth Points, 200 High Grade Garnet, and 200 High Grade Essence. 
These three alone are essential for enhancement in Dragon S. If you possess the chest key, you will receive even more rewards, notably 1500 gold. Every character that reaches level 95 will receive the Cerberus pouch as a reward, so in this way you can actually earn gold, labyrinth points, hybrid garden and essence through it. You can also buy a slot in Cerberus Nets parties if you just want the labyrinth points, hybrid garden and essence. It is usually less than 600 gold for a slot in the CBN party, so 200 hybrid garden is already worth more than 600 gold. So with all the rewards considered including the 10,000 lemon points, it is definitely well worth the money to buy a slot. You can also buy a Fission Maze 13th floor service costing around 4,000 to 5,000 gold for extremely good rewards that you can receive weekly including 9,000 lemon points. It is well worth the gold especially if you need lemon points for enhancement or you can actually find friends who can carry you for free. More on gold. You can stack different bot missions of the same mess together. For example, you can stack a co-op, alliance, counter-attack, and generic bot mission quest of our Bishop Ness. In this way, you can maximize the use of FTG and earn a tremendous amount of gold from the rewards at the end of the run. Take note that for co-op missions, they usually have a labyrinth difficulty of 6, of six or higher. And these co-op missions that have different difficulty can stack as well. For example, the rewards of a co-op Archbishop Nest of Labyrinth Difficulty 6 Plus can stack with a co-op Archbishop Nest of Labyrinth Difficulty 7 Plus. So finding friends to play with or joining a guild to stack the right mission bot quest together is definitely really rewarding and you should definitely take note of it to make full use of the rewards you can receive. If you have time, you can also make sub characters that get to level 95 reap the rewards of the Cerberus Nest Park, and then use these sub to refresh for good bot missions that you can run with uh, run yourself or with your friends. For free-to-play players, this part will be essential. Personally, I have 5 level 95 characters that I use for this purpose to earn myself some extra gold and enhancement materials for Amano Kenji. With all the information I provided, you should be able to progress your gear steadily. I have not mentioned Dragon Jades because the current Jade system will be overhauled with a brand new one probably in September. Speed Cody has a video on this, so again, I'll link it in the description below. From here on out, the way to tackle progression in the game is pretty open-ended. People who do want to play with enhancement of RNG can save up gold and purchase the equipment they want directly. For example, you can save up gold to purchase a plus 10 FDN sword or a plus 10 BDN ring or you can actually buy a base ring and enhance them yourself. The rest is up to you. So that's it for this video, I hope this video is helpful to you. If it is, be sure to smash that like button. Name has Makua Kazu, as always thanks for watching, and god bless. Check out the Solo Labyrinth 8 video by my gladiator, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye bye!